to solve a problem. That's a bit like looking for something in a forest. You've got countless trees and roots and stumps, infinitely many in every direction. And walking about here, you haven't got the slightest clue what you're looking for. And then you find something strange. I was born in 1802 in Norway. My father was a priest and I can probably tell you enough about him and my childhood by letting you know that he was the greatest supplier of alcohol to the congregation. By time, I left my parents and started studying at a school in Christiania, the capital of Norway. Here, I quickly got to know Mr. Bardet, my maths teacher. He found quite a lot of enjoyment in beating his students, including me, whenever he felt that was appropriate. One day, he took it a step further and killed one of my classmates. And that was obviously terrible, but it was not all bad, because Mr. Bardet was replaced with another teacher, Mr. Holmbo. And Mr. Holmbo was quite a different sort of man. He let me develop my skills in mathematics, he became my close friend, and he showed me a most peculiar problem. This problem followed me to university, where I studied maths and other subjects. Here I got to know Professor Hansten and his wife. Being a university student is not a simple life and they helped me and took good care of me. Not only did I enjoy my time as a student in Christiania, but I also stayed in Copenhagen for three months or so. Here, I danced a waltz with a wonderful girl at a very dapper party one night. But I couldn't really waltz. She couldn't really waltz either. As a matter of fact, the waltz was so terrible that some time later, Miss Christine Kemp and I were engaged. I suppose I should mention the problem I talked about a minute ago. You're all, hopefully, familiar with equations. Any equation of first, second, third and fourth degree can be rewritten into a general form and these general equations have general solutions. But what about equations of fifth degree? This may seem like a boring and slightly trivial problem, but it had remained unsolved since ancient times. And then suddenly I, a completely unknown mathematics student from Norway, suddenly proves that equations of fifth degree have no general solution. And again, this doesn't seem like the discovery of a lifetime, but it stirred some forces further down in Europe. And speaking of Europe, I wanted to travel. Well, I got the scholarship. You did? Yeah. We did. The king himself sent a letter. Do you know where you're going? Yeah, Göttingen. Paris, I suppose. It's at least where my final destination. Paris. Having received the funds, I ventured once again to Copenhagen and then further to Berlin to speak to the great engineer and mathematician August Leopold Kalle. We quickly became friends and we had many conversations in which we discussed mathematics and the scientific community in Europe. I did not speak German very well and he obviously did not speak Norwegian. But he had worked with several French mathematicians and I had studied French. And thus the conversation went along in a kind of French. Herr Keller was soon to present an idea he had been thinking of for a long time. He wanted to publish a scientific magazine. And I was given the honourable opportunity to write some of the articles for this new magazine. Je pense que nous avons un article prêt. Merci. The impossibility. Tous les questions de après 50 degrés. The fantastic. 
Eventually, I had to leave Berlin and venture onwards. I went through Germany to Dresden, and then I ventured on to Prague, and from there onwards, I visited Switzerland, Austria, even Italy. Eventually, I had to turn around, and I went through Switzerland and came to France, and en fin, I came to Paris. Here I was well received by a Monsieur and Mademoiselle Cot, who took great care of me. Having finally arrived in Paris, I could start working on the multitude of ideas I'd dreamt up while travelling through Europe. I started working on a paper on transcendental analytic functions. The greatest paper I have ever written, yet that very same paper would turn out to be the greatest tragedy of my life. When I had finished the paper, I sent it to l'Académie des Sciences, so that all the great and pompous mathematicians there could have a look at it. And so I waited for the reply. And I waited. And I waited. And I waited. Supposedly, Monsieur Cauchy had received my paper, and my paper probably disappeared deeper and deeper into the piles of paper on his desk. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited. I worked a bit sporadically with certain elliptic curves and Fermat's last theorem. But obviously I had lost inspiration and I couldn't think as clearly as I did before. And on top of it all, I was starting to become ill. And I waited, and I waited. In the end, I had to leave Paris and return to Norway. I visited Christine, who had gotten a job as a governess. I was so happy to see her, because when I came there, I had no job and my life's work was lost forever. One night I collapsed in my room, and from then on time moved quickly. In general, they can't be proved. They can't prove correctly. None of them does it right. Not the Koshi, none of the French ones. They're not getting it right. That's simply what I'm saying. It's, it's, right. it's a convergence series. Remember, it's a series of in. Quick! 